a very good afternoon a very good afternoon to all the students today i'll be telling you about the most interesting topic that is the classification by decision tree of machine learning but i thought to give you a quick overview of machine learning also so these are the outlines that i'll be teaching you what is machine learning history of it machine learning machine learning at present the branches of machine learning and at last i'll be uh, including all the aspects of classification by decision tree means this topic will be in detail so i'll not dive much into uh, the introductory part of machine learning as you all know this is just to give you a quick overview so so according to arthur samuel machine learning algorithms enables the computer to learn from data and even improve themselves without being explicitly programmed also you can say that it is a category of algorithm that allows software applications to become more accurate in predicting categorizing outcomes without being explicitly programmed so the basic premise of machine learning is to build algorithms which can receive input data and use statistical analysis to predict and to categorize an output so this is the history of machine learning now we have the hype of machine learning but the continuous work was dived in 1949 Machine learning is based on a model of brain cell interaction. The model was created in 1949 by Donald Hebb for the first time. Then in 1950s Arthur Samuel of IBM developed a computer program for playing checkers. And at that time he first came up with the phrase machine learning. In 1967 the nearest neighbor algorithm was conceived. and that was the beginning of pattern recognition then in 1970s and 1980s the machine learning and artificial intelligence was and they were given a separated path i know still you both merge up machine learning and artificial intelligence but since i have told you previously also that this is the sub domain of uh machine learning is sub sub domain of artificial intelligence as you can see in the diagram also that artificial uh, intelligence has machine learning and machine learning has deep learning and you can say deep learning is a part of neural networks so uh it's like artificial intelligence is not complete without machine learning and machine learning is not complete without deep learning and uh, uh, so what we can do we cannot conversely uh, make use of these both terms but they have its own exact uh, usage to be used so the ml industry uh, maintained its focus on neural networks and then flourished in 1990s and around 2007 a deep learning technique called long short term memory started outperforming more traditional speech recognition programs you all must know very nicely hi alexa and siri so they are the uh, outcomes of deep learning technique called long short term memory so these are the applications of machine learning at present analyzing sales data real time mobile personalization fraud detection product recommendation learning management systems dynamic pricing and natural language processing like speaking with humans coming towards the branches of machine learning we have unsupervised learning supervised learning and reinforcement learning unsupervised learning uh, is like uh, uh, supervision the all the algorithms that are being performed uh, they learn by their own uh, nothing sort of supervision is been given while processing them the examples are clustering and dimensionality reduction 
whereas supervised learning the term itself says that uh, it is a kind of uh, learning algorithm in which uh, data is being trained just like a teacher trains a student similarly the data is being trained uh, and being uh, is being supervised means the output is also being given in this uh, training and moreover our data is all labeled data whereas in reinforcement learning uh, it is more uh, like uh, diving into ai artificial intelligence because it works on uh, uh, the given feedback means whatever the outcome feedback is there it feeds it in uh, feed its own and then learn it learn from it and then process ahead so we will start with supervised learning in which we have classification you can see uh, the structure have classification and its application are like identity identity fraud detection image classification customer retention diagnosis so the uh, supervised learning as i told you right now that in supervised learning the data is labeled which means that each data is tagged with correct label the goal is to approximate the mapping function so well that when you have a new input data x so that you can predict the output variables y for the data that this is our ultimate aim while we go ahead with supervised learning and you can see uh, the image also we have grapes and we have given some other grapes to the model ultimately it checks it out that it is a grapes so coming towards classification classification now you can see there are many uh, class the best example for classification you can see uh, our various uh, uh, shopping websites uh, all the things are being classified very well that whatever you have to buy you go ahead towards that section and buy it very easily otherwise if it would have been all to one so it would have been very difficult for us to search so only the classification and the division of uh, uh, various things that we need to buy has been sectioned very well by the online uh, e-commerce websites so that is uh, you can see in our image also there are various products and that has been classified similarly um this in this classification also the ultimate aim is same we are actually classifying or we are actually categorizing so uh, classification is a supervised learning concept which basically categorizes a set of data into classes the most common classification problems are speech recognition face detection handwriting recognition document classification etc uh, see this uh, classification can be either a binary one or a multi class problem also so there are bunch of machine learning algorithms for classification and uh, uh, binary classification means that uh, you have either uh, means you have only two things to classify either yes or no right or wrong and uh, zero or one and so on so let us take a look to the uh, classification algorithm uh, here we will be discussing today only the decision tree uh, rest uh, the two other i'll discuss in uh, upcoming videos so the decision tree you can see uh, it is like it is structured in a tree format so decision tree is the most powerful and popular tool for classification it is a flowchart like tree structure where each internal node denotes a test on an attribute and uh, each uh, uh, branch represents an outcome of the test and each leaf node means the terminal node it holds a class label you can see that outlook is there and outlook has three categories sunny overcast rain and uh, humidity have again the category high and normal wind again have strong weak and so on 
how we are actually uh, representing it so decision tree classify instances by sorting them down the tree from the root to some leaf node which provides the classification of the instance an instance is classified by starting at the root node of the tree testing the attribute specified by this node then moving down the tree branch corresponding to the value of the attribute as shown in the above figure this one so this process is then repeated for the subtree rooted at the new node now uh, the decision tree in the above figure classifies a particular uh, you can see that this is our decision tree okay so now uh, actually what we are doing with this this is an example where we are trying to classify a particular morning according to whether it is a uh, suitable for playing tennis or not so in this case uh the our instance which we have to find like if outlook is rain temperature and you see remember outlook temperature and humidity these are the labels okay so see label data means like if i have been uh, given you simply the numbers 22 23 24 25 okay so can you say this is label data no label data uh, if uh, data is not labeled and if i'll ask person a what is 21 22 23 he can answer that ma'am this can be a roll number yeah that is also right and if i ask uh, person b what is this he can say it ma'am it is an age number also so that is also right so it is very mandatory for us to label data act to actually know what it is so if i label it like it is uh, while using this data it is age so we can say that age is age is equal to 21 22 23 so this is now a labeled data right so outlook temperature humidity this is labeled jaise humne age uh, we have used na age similarly outlook temperature and humidity are the labels so for that i've used rain temperature is hot and humidity high and wind is strong if we have this instance so now our task is to make a decision tree from the given data and to know whether um, the morning is suitable for us to go and play for tennis or not so it would be sorted down the leftmost branch of this decision tree and would therefore be classified as a negative instance see remember i'll i'll show you again rain hot high and strong rain hot high and strong so if you see high and strong they both are ultimately giving the no results right so uh, if we uh, check out the decision tree our uh, instance is giving us the answer that it is no now you can uh, see this also that this is a kind of binary classification because we have to answer or classify either just in yes or no condition okay so uh, in other words we can say that decision tree represent a disjunction of conjunctions of constraint on the attribute value of instances now uh, like outlook sunny humidity all should be like yes that, uh, at that time only we can go ahead with yes and if it is more of no so ultimately our instance will be no so uh, this is example suppose there is a candidate who has a job offer and wants to decide whether he should accept the offer or not so to solve this problem the decision tree starts with the root node that is salary attribute the root node splits further into next decision node uh, instead of uh, uh, telling you and reading out this i'll show you it directly see this is a decision tree uh, for a person to decide whether the uh, the job offer he should accept it or not 
so the terms and conditions are been uh, truly uh, derived in a tree pattern the salary if the salary is between this 50000 to 80000 dollar so uh, he is saying yes and then a uh, condition comes whether office is near to home or not if it is no then he is going to decline that offer otherwise if it is yes then he has the third more condition whether it provides cab facility or not so if it is yes then he is going to accept the offer otherwise he'll decline it okay so uh, this is and now the question might come into your mind how to start to make the decision tree means the first note that we have to uh make it or what should be the leaf notes and how where we have to divide so basically this uh, depends upon uh, information gain and the guinea index decision tree so the attri uh, this process is being known as attribute selection measures so the first one is information gain so it is the measurement of changes in entropy after the segmentation of a data set based on an attribute see uh, i would say that uh, if uh, always decision tree algorithm always tries to maximize the value of information gain so the highest information gain will split first means whatever uh, attribute will gain highest information it will be splitted first and that will be at the root node so the um, the formula for this information gain is entropy s minus entropy each feature this uh, you will get to know i have a example also over here uh, by which you can understand it well before that you must know what is entropy it is a metric to measure the impurity in a given attribute means some sort of randomness it specifies uh, randomness in data entropy can be calculated as this is the formula minus p probability of yes log base 2 probability of yes minus probability of no uh, log base 2 probability of no okay then the second one is gini index a feature with a lower gini index is chosen as a split means uh if you are talking about information gain gain then uh, uh, if the attribute is having highest information gain then we can split it first and uh, if uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, gini index is low then it is chosen for a split gini index is a measure of impurity uh, while creating a decision tree in the cart cart means classification and regression tree algorithm this is a kind of algorithm then an attribute with the low gini index should be preferred as compared to the high gini index it only creates binary splits and the cart algorithm uses the gini index to create binary splits see whenever you are using cart algorithm for classification then only you have to use this gini index okay so it's like either of these two features you can use to split the attributes either the information gain or the gini index so uh, the formula for gini index is given 1 minus uh, summation of j p j square now this is uh, uh, like this is the illustration and how you have to calculate see i told you that outlook is one of the label and it the label of outlook has three categories sunny overcast rainy okay so uh, then we have to decide whether to play golf or not so if it is sunny then uh, yes is 3 and no is 2 total 5 circumstances okay similarly overcast have 4 then no 0 and 4 rainy has 2 yes and 3 no a total 5 uh, circumstances so in all for outlook if we are talking there are 14 uh, circumstances now to calculate the entropy for if we are talking only for play golf it it was written i told you that 
uh, it was given that uh, in uh, see information gain is equal to entropy s minus entropy each feature means entropy s means entropy play golf so uh, see play golf mein ye actually hamare paas data tha we have this data and uh, in this data uh, there was uh, the, the question was then the table set was given and from that table the instances i have taken just to tell you how to calculate so in that table uh, total play golf instances for yes was 9 and for no was 5 so entropy 5 comma 9 because we have our um, formula like p no log 2 p minus p yes log 2 yes so uh, for probability of uh, yes is what 9 upon 14 log 2 9 upon 14 similarly for no it's like 5 upon 14 log to 5 upon 14 okay so when you will calculate all these you will get the answer 0.94 and this is the entropy of s s means play golf now for each attribute how you are going to calculate look here e play golf with outlook we are uh, uh, choosing this so for sunny we are using for sunny how it is 5 by 14 into 0.972 means 5 by 14, and then entropy of E 3 comma 2. For each we have to find. Uh, for outlook we will find uh, for sunny, overcast, and for rainy. Okay. Entropy of 3 comma 2 is like again we will find with yes and no, like 3 upon 5. log 2 3 upon 5 then 2 upon 5 log 2 2 upon 5 and in total when we'll get the answer we'll multiply it with 5 upon 14 and similarly this process will go ahead and ultimately we'll get the answer 0.693 so now uh, it will say that information gain what is the final answer for outlook it is like uh, 0.94 Minus 0.693. So 0.247 we have got information gain. Now similarly we can do with other uh, labels like temperature. Abhi uh, we have taken only outlook into the consideration. What other we have? We have temperature. We have humidity. We have wind. So. when we will find all the answers of information gain for all the labels whomsoever will have the highest information gain we will take it first and we will split it into the given conditions and in this way uh, by checking the information gain value we develop our decision tree so hope you have understood the concept of decision tree and uh, by which you can do a uh, do classification also so that's it our main motive was to know how the decision tree works and how the information gain and gain index uh, index works so that's all from today's thank you stay tuned and keep learning